Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Linked AM on BCN News. And um, as you've been seeing over the past you know, few weeks now, you know, we've really gone all in to, uh, to say that we're going to support STEM, which we've always supported, because I think four years ago, we uh, started a, a special feature called The Future Workforce, and that's how I got introduced to Best Robotics. I got introduced to Texas Instruments and all of the great things that they were doing. And then that just kind of launched this. Uh, mission of mine personally uh, to go and really sort of educate businesses out there how important STEM is. And of course, STEM, just to, to remind everyone, is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, and that, uh, that, that sort of those disciplines are really the foundations and the pillars of, uh, of really the, the industry, if you think about it. Uh, and we've been putting out posts over the past few weeks about you know, how important those, those pillars are. Uh, but what I am really excited about today, I, I've got uh, an Emmy award-winning um, uh, author, uh, on the on the show and uh, this uh, this young lady is actually uh, uh, a doctor uh, dr colleen kelly uh, and she's the founder of uh, of kids chemical solutions and uh, and and i believe she was at south by southwest that's how i got to know her because i saw all these posts that were going on and i thought you know what chemistry wasn't my 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 strength but when i found out what colleen was doing um, and I'm going to bring Colleen into the conversation any second now. Um, I thought I might have enjoyed chemistry if, if, if I knew what these resources were. So, Colleen, you're in the virtual studio with us today. Uh, thank you for joining me this morning. And uh, again, um, it's just, it, it, it struck me that I, I could have been a, a master of chemistry if I knew what you were doing. And so, so tell me a little bit about what your mission is and, um, and what, what you're doing at, over there. Great. Yeah. Good morning. And thanks for having me on the show, Carl. Uh, your comment about chemistry is resonates with most folks. I mean, almost everyone I know says the same thing. <laughs> um, so so you're in a good pool of people right there. Um, it's it's almost everybody. And, and it's really unfortunate. Um, and this includes my own family. I'm a first generation college student myself. Um, was properly trained to go into the secretarial field. So I'm a really good typist. Uh, wasn't expected to go to college. Um, and somehow I stumbled upon chemistry and um, found an affinity, ease and joy in chemistry. So um, that was probably one of the mysteries of, of, with my background, how was I able to go on and get a PhD and do a postdoc and become a professor and you know, publish research papers and all of that. You know, what was it about that, that it was sticking where most of the world has the reaction that you have, um, that chemistry is um, distasteful at best. <laughs> so, so, so what you, what you did though, you, you, you then took all of that sort of, you know, that con in context of, of how people, you know, have this, you know, fear of what chemistry is. So, and then you put it into comics, didn't you? You put it into a series of, of books. Is that, is, I did, is, yeah. That was that was a process, Carl. Uh, it, it wasn't. I didn't initially intend on creating comic books. I didn't seek out for that. But it was years and years of teaching really brilliant college students who excelled in every other course but mine. Um, and I, it was puzzling. I couldn't understand why these students who are straight A's across the board want to go into medicine. Um, and were failing chemistry. So I just began telling stories in the classroom. And even though they may have seemed juvenile to my colleagues, for example, the students loved the stories. And I had, you know, 19, 20, 21 year old students engaging in my stories and, and then translating them into robust chemistry concepts. And so it was a bridge for them to get over that. It also in introduced levity, joy into my classroom, which was much needed in a class that was um, so threatening at first uh, to the students. So for many, many years, I told these stories and finally decided I had the brilliant idea that I was going to write a textbook with these stories. And that fell flat. Every every textbook editor in the world rejected that proposal. Um, nobody wanted an organic chemistry textbook full of stories um, with fun, cute characters. So <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you know, it, it, when you're first to do something, it, it's really um, oh, yeah, yeah. You, ha you have you have a mountain to climb. So 
I uh, created the stories more for children and added a lot of dialogue, went to tons of classes on children's literature um, on my own and, and took courses in children's literature and realized that when you're writing dialogue heavy, it either needs to be like an animated something or a comic book. And um, so I thought, well, I guess I need to learn how to write comic books then. So, um, so that that's how the how the iterative process worked for me to get to land on a comic book. But it wasn't the I didn't say, oh, these will be great comic books someday. <laughs> well, it's like it's like effect. anything, isn't it? When you've got that journey of, as you say, innovation of anything that's new, um, you 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 have to go through that process. Um, <clears throat> I remember. Back in the early 2000s, I got involved in a software development company, uh, and they were doing these games, okay? And edu games had never even been thought of. The word never been thought of. But then it, it struck us when we were working together that, that first of all, it was like a trigger. The, my, my, my son came to me. We went to the, the, the game store. We bought a game. Like an hour later, he said, can I go back? I've finished the game. I was like, how do you finish the game? And he said, well, I, I went through all the levels and everything. I want to go and buy another book. I thought, if, if he can fathom that out, and if you put educational pieces into the game, so, and it's the same with, I mean, anime. Yeah. Anime is a huge, you know, uh, sort of genre now in, in, in movie and in video. So uh, sort of comic books are the same. And so yeah. it, it's because you, you absorb the reader into that into that story and you're pulling them through with the with the characters in the comic book etc so it's brilliant i, I mean i got to say it's yeah. brilliant but thank so, you it, well it is it is and and so so what why is stem so important in today's industry because we talk we're telling these stories all the time about uh, uh, brilliant people like you of, of coming up with ways to engage the kids. But why is STEM so important with industry these days, do you think? Yeah, no, this is a critical question it, and really has propelled me to keep going um, despite all these obstacles. Um, when I talk about STEM specifically, I'm talking about the S. Yes, of <laughs> so course, the science of it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I, I focus on the S, and then I and then I subdivide that S into chemistry. But it's um, the first so one on the in the in the acronym as well. It's very yeah. important. <laughs> and I feel like chemistry is um, buried in the STEM acronym, and I want to bring it out um, for two reasons. Um, first reason is our workforce right now in the medical field, um, health industries is we have about five to six percent of physicians specifically as identifying as African-American or black. And I feel like um, that number is reflected in the um, attrition rate in, in college courses. So right now, paralleling to that data is about we have about 80 percent failure rate for those same students in college level chemistry. And that that number hasn't budged for 30 years. So regardless of what's been done or what people are doing or what innovations are coming, we still have that 80% failure rate in college level chemistry. So if 80% of our underrepresented students are failing chemistry, they can't apply to medical school. So we're losing, you, you can see the funnel effect of the workforce right there. Um, this is getting scary to me. Um, it's not just um, physicians of color, um, although I'm I'm focused on that population, my family's African American by marriage, so um, I'm definitely focused on that population for personal reasons. Um, but we're, if you've tried to make an appointment with the doctor lately, you know what I'm talking about. If you've tried to get in for anything, and and that number, and the number of physicians is not going up, and we still have students who are unable to get over this barrier of chemistry in college. And so I fear for the health workforce and healthcare in general, if we are, are not able to get our students past chemistry, we have 50 college majors that depend on chemistry. Um, and so those 50 majors are all impacted by a student failing chemistry. So the economic workforce development of this one course, um, really it's two, it's freshman chemistry and organic chemistry. It is something we all need to talk about and no one's talking about. Um, so, you know, in general, it's about a 50% failure rate for all students. So uh, I'm very, very, very alarmingly concerned about the future of our workforce in chemistry. 
um, I had a a brief uh, uh, LinkedIn exchange with Jim Federling, the um, CEO of Dow, and uh, you know I I articulated that I'm afraid he the the Dow won't have any chemist <laughs> if we don't if we don't change all this. So it's the chemical right. industry specifically, but I I really think folks really light up when they realize it's not just the chemical industry, it's the medical industry as well. And there's no way around it. I mean, chemistry is required. So it's not like, well, we can still become a doctor if we are a French major. That, that's not entirely true. You oh, can no. major in French, but you still have to take chemistry. Well, yeah, you need to know what the, the, the medications are. But so, so is it because it's so daunting? Because it's such a pillar, uh, as you say, because you talk about it being the S in STEM, et cetera, but chemistry in, in the healthcare sector is, is, is because of that's its core uh, function, but also it actually interacts with the, the, uh, the T, the E and the M, doesn't it as well? Because of course, it, yes. very, very much so, but very much is, it, so. is it, is it because it is so daunting? I mean, you know, I, I, I came on the show today saying, you know, I wasn't very good at chemistry and it, and it, it I moved away from it because I wasn't very good at it. If you make it more mainstream and fun as you're trying to do, that's that's the the way to do, it, isn't it? And and what shocked me when you said that, you know, editors of books were saying, "No, nah, this ain't going to work." That's the attitude we got to stay away from, isn't it? We got to <laughs> yeah. stay away from this. You know, oh, that ain't going to work because innovation, in 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 its own word, is moving forward. And so, so why is it so daunting? And you know, what, what's your, what's your remedy for the future? Do you think? Yeah, I, I think that's been my quintessential question. Is you know, I, as I mentioned, I have brilliant students. No one takes organic chemistry in college without being brilliant, yeah. motivated, all of the above. Yeah. And yet they were failing, and um, you know, frustrated, and and all of these emotions. And so I did about five years of research on this topic to really understand it, because towards the end of my career, I was just tired of it. And I just said, why is this so hard? Again, it wasn't hard for me. So um, when I went back and did some research on this and was looking at it, and this is something I intuitively had known for 30 years of being in the classroom, my students weren't able to see what I was seeing. So no matter how what I was drawing on the on the whiteboard, uh, a molecular structure or chemical formula, they they weren't able to see it. And it came down to what I've uncovered is called molecular literacy. And so imagine that um, we have uh, instead of teaching our children to read when they're, you know, right around four, five, six, beginning to teach them to read around then, we start when they're 15 and give them one course in reading at about 15 or 16 years old, and then say, okay, great. You know, the alphabet, you don't need to know the alphabet. You can look it up. You can look up the alphabet and you've you've gone through a course in reading. Let's go to college and oh, we get to college and here's six Hemingway books and write an essay and, um, you know, go on from there. And, and we haven't trained our, and that's what we're doing to our students in chemistry is it's a language. And so if we consider the periodic table, the alphabet of science, we should be aligning the alphabet of science with the uh, our regular alphabet. So I did some research in um, neuroplasticity of kids at around age eight. And what happens is they transition from learning to read to reading to learn. So there are neural pathways for that interpretive um, process of symbols, if you will, letters or symbols, is wide open then. And so if we introduce the periodic table as the alphabet of science at that point, they're able to then see how, you know, sodium Na, chlorine Cl go together to spell sodium chloride and what that means. And so if we approach chemistry as molecular literacy first and establish molecular literacy as a foundation then for learning chemistry, again, it's like learning to read and then going to college to be a literature major, an English major. So we need a lot more foundational work on molecular literacy um, as opposed to having kids make kits with slime and, um, you know, volcanoes. Uh, again, I always tell folks, I can make a great loaf of bread without knowing how to read. Right. Right. Yep. So, yep. so we can, we can do, 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 do. And, and I think a STEM education globally and definitely nationally has 
gone into this world of make, 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 make. Kids need hands on all the time. And my argument is they need to learn how to read first. And you can supplement with hands on, but please make sure that you're introducing molecular literacy because these students are finding it daunting. You found it daunting. Everyone in my family found it daunting because they could, they were illiterate. And anytime you're illiterate, I mean, I've traveled the world and believe me, when I was in China, um, I knew the feeling my students had. I couldn't read one sign. I had no idea how to get around. I, I have I have no grasp of, of any of uh, Asian languages. And so I had students in front of me who were nodding their head politely, but they could not see what I was seeing. And it's so hard. Yeah, because you, you you've got to give them that foundation. Um, and at a younger age, they're more likely to start to um, c connect and to to learn because you if you start them off young enough, but you can still learn if you're a college student or a high school student, you can still teach that foundation, can't you? It's it's just from what I'm hearing you say is it's it's a it, it's a it's a level or, or a, a part of the process that isn't there. The, the, there's all of this. We'll jump to oh, we'll we'll put here are the ingredients and you put them all together but you don't know what the ingredients are. Yeah, exactly. you talk about, you. I, I have no idea what yeast is, but I can make a piece of bread. I'll just, you, they gave me this, 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 this product and I'm just going to put it in because that's what they tell me to do. But if right. I, but I have to understand what the elements are really right. to, <clears throat> to make a good piece of bread, <laughs> you know, right. loaf of bread. It really is. Um, but that, that, what I'm hearing you say is they don't teach you how to understand what the ingredients are. Yeah, there's this assumption that um, when students get to college that they've had chemistry and they should they should know that carbon is C and calcium is CA, but they they don't. They haven't had enough time practicing even that fundamental. So, you know, I have brilliant students mixing up those symbols. Well, understandably, they both start with CA. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> right. it, 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 it's not, there's no slight there. And so, um, in higher education, we're, we're not want to go back to teach things that we think should have been taught earlier. But the fact is they're not taught earlier. Um, they're introduced. There's a difference between introducing something and really learning it. And yeah, um, yeah and it takes time. Uh, if you go to college to be a music major, you didn't pick up um, your first violin at age 17. No, no that's right. Right? Yeah. So. Uh, if you want to be a physician, you should have a periodic table in front of you at age eight. Um, yeah. it, it, and it's not hard. And I've created ways and, and all kinds of platforms for teachers and students and families globally to access this. So I, I'm, I'm absolutely loving this conversation. I think, um, I think we're going to have a couple of more conversations because unfortunately we, we're kind of <laughs> coming up towards the end of the time. But um, so, so really, what I'm hearing you say is, I mean, first of all, you've created resources that are fun and engaging through the comics yes. that you have. Um, and then the second thing is we really need to bring people in younger and teach them the fundamentals earlier yes. um, and, and really get them to, to absorb it. And if you do it in a fun and engaging way, then they will learn it. Yes. It's, not, it's not just a, a table in front of you that go, okay, I have no idea because I'm learning the alphabet at the moment and I don't want to learn the times table and I don't want to learn this really un unusual periodic table. So if you do it in a fun and engaging way. So what, just just as before we, we end the conversation, what do you think is the future? How do we move forward with this in your mind? Right, I think molecular literacy needs to be um, seamlessly woven and integrated into a student's curriculum. And, and maybe it's part of, um, I, right now I've been piloting this for about three years in uh, elementary schools. And currently I'm actually uh, teaching a science in a science classroom. Um, and I've got four-year-olds through 10-year-olds right now. Great. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I really wanted that that span because I wanted to see this. What what is the impact of molecular literacy? Like wh how early is too early? And they really do need to know how to read. Um, so right about second grade is is probably second grade and up. Um, but I think the future is just having 
Um, the books available, maybe teachers use um, my comic books as part of their, you know, reading. Um, it, it does not have to be this thing. Like it doesn't have to be taught by me. Um, it, it can be a unit. There's a, a great um, unit in first grade that I still remember from my son. It was called Flat Stanley. And I don't know. Um, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So well, the Flat you, Stanley you, books. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. So, yeah. so maybe, maybe um, my my comic books would be like the Flat Stanley unit. Like all of a sudden, families go, are like, "Oh, wow, you're learning chemistry with Poppy and Ray and Kids Chemical Solutions and all the games and things." And and so it becomes this thing that families look forward to when their child is in that unit, and and it becomes these lasting stories that um, you know older siblings, younger siblings, parents are are used to, and teachers look forward to teaching it. Um, and it's, um, there's games, puzzles, activities, there's all kinds of stuff. What there isn't is a ton of, um, mass. So, you know, and I, I, I'm in an elementary school right now and I know how busy those teachers are. Last thing they need to be doing is cleaning up after five-year-olds making slime, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's enough other natural messes that they have. So I really, I really think, um, you know, making it easy, um, or at home for a summer, you know, maybe they take my comic books on a road trip and learn chemistry. We have an audible of each chemistry book. Have it playing in the car when you're on a road trip in the summer and you can read along and play as a family. So I really want it to be not daunting, natural, engaging, accessible, inclusive, intergenerational, all of those things. Well, I, I think, you know, one of the things that just leapt out at me okay and and i'm gonna ask your opinion on this okay because i'm a parent now my kids now are in college etc and and also my oldest is is in work in the workforce now but i wonder if it, because i never really pushed them because i felt that chemistry was daunting and i didn't understand it so i didn't want to be embarrassed as a parent yeah with the kid with my kids and so i push them to sports and to all these other you know more arts type of thing um but is that is that something that we've got to get over as well get the the parents to feel comfortable talking about so the parents really need to engage the fact that yes i can talk about because I remember my kids coming home and saying, can you help me with my homework? And I'd be like, well, I'm not very good at algebra. Um, go see your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but, but I think that that is a, there's something there, isn't there? So if you can, if you can get the parents feeling comfortable, so they need to f feel comfortable with the way, the resources that are available. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I say on my website that my resources are for ages eight to 108. And I, I start it. all of my workshops with that as well. Yeah. When I was at South by Southwest, my workshop I said, all right, everyone in here is between eight and 108. We're good. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> again, my no one in my family knows chemistry. Um, so I'm inspired by, you know, my, my parents um, to say, okay, you know, they've, you know, they, I, I am this curiosity at best to them of, of what, where did she come from? <laughs> like, how does she know this? Uh -huh. um, so Right. It, it, at family gatherings, you know, there's it, there's all this question. So I have also developed the ability to translate chemistry out of necessity to, you know, explain over Thanksgiving what my research is about so that folks understand and it's not so strange. Well, I love your mission. I, I love the I love the comic books. I love that, that vision and mission that you have. And as I say, I know you're, you're a very busy person and I appreciate you coming on to the show. Um, I'm going to be sharing, of course, the link to your website uh, and, you. uh, and and sort of uh, telling uh, the uh, the folks out there, the readers, because, again, you know, uh, the, the, the people that are out there that watch some of the shows, et cetera, are business leaders, et cetera. And they've got to understand that this is an important subject because if we don't address it now, it is going to affect their, their work, their industry, et cetera. So if we start now, then hopefully, because that gap is widening of where people are retiring and then the new talents coming into the workforce, we want them to be educated we want them to be skilled in various subjects and chemistry by the sounds of it especially in the healthcare sector is a very important subject so thank you for uh, for this mission that you're on and thank you for joining me this morning i appreciate you yeah thank you carl this was fun
I, well, that was great. Well, I appreciate it. And as I say, I'm going to have you back on because there's a couple more chemistry questions <laughs> that I didn't get in first grade that I need to uh, to get understand. <laughs> so thank you. Of course, For that sure. was that was Dr. Colleen Kelly, um, of course, Emmy Award winning author and founder um, of uh, Kids uh, Chemical Solutions. So uh, um, I, until the next time, I mean, we, we've we've we're having these wonderful guests on um, that are really sort of uh, educated educating us and uh, different things and making me feel comfortable that, yeah, I could have been a, um, a, a master of chemistry, but I didn't go down that path because I didn't have Colleen's uh, resources in front of me. But uh, anyway, uh, until the next time, uh, you're going to uh, hear some more great, um, great guests on the show. And um, I'm looking forward to it. But as I say, always, you know, go out there, have some fun, um, you know, but make some money because it's business. This is business class news, BCN news. You've got to have fun. We've got to go make some money because this is business class news. And the way to do that is to bring educated and skilled workforce into play. And that's why we're really showcasing STEM because that is your future. Okay, until the next time, goodbye. <laughs>